everybody, my name is Misha Quint. I'm the music director and founder of Interharmony. Interharmony consists of two festivals in Italy, one in Germany, an online festival, the Interharmony International School of Music Online, the first online music conservatory. Today, I am excited to welcome you to our Interharmony Artist Interview Series. Have fun! fine and i hope you are well thank you everything is good and these days i have so much excitement going on with all my these festivals online school and all these things you're a little bit special guy because you're really i could say you're a fixture <laughs> festivals <laughs> you oh were so God. many times you know <laughs> like i feel like uh, if i don't see you, something's wrong you know something so, is wrong <laughs> so it feels good to see you and then of course you were every possible situation at our festival so in other words you were at festivals like in person and of course you were also in our online festival we all enjoyed your performances there i remember like speaking to you after the concert you had some really deep analysis of how it affects how does it feel to listen even to your own playing your your thoughts they're always appreciated of course yeah about that thing specifically and then we can talk about interharmony in more generally, if you like, I mean, I've been in two locations in Italy and Germany. So, I mean, I've experienced a lot of those things and it's always so special. When we did the festival this summer, um, I was still adjusting to online things as we all were. We still are. Like, what's it going to mean? And what are we giving up? But then uh, sometimes, you know, when we make these adjustments, something happens that is unanticipated and it's something sort of beautiful in a new way. And so, I will be honest with you. I'm always honest with you, but I'll be honest once again. When I heard that we're going to do these faculty recitals as a kind of a online combination thing, I was not excited about it because I thought, well, online concerts, they don't, I don't know, it can be kind of boring and you don't feel like you're really there. This came as a, a nice surprise to me. This, and this comes from somebody, I've always been somebody very devoted to the in-person experience, you know, I think you and I are probably very like that way, you know, the audience is there, the connection, the energy in the room, that's kind of what it's all about, right? It's our precious heritage and, and the, that, that aliveness of the moment in concerts is like nothing else. So that's why I was sort of ho-hum about the whole, uh, you know, idea. But I'm watching this thing, uh, you know, with, it's me and it's other people and I was became more and more entranced with it. And it's like the beautiful dream, I would say, because all the trappings of a live concert have gone away. The camera comes up on a scene and there's somebody on the faculty sitting at a, their instrument and they just start to play a piece that they've chosen because it's something special that they really love and they want to share it. The camera comes up, they, they do their piece 
and then it just sort of fades out at the end and then gently fades into the next person. So there's no applause. There's no walking off stage. There's no anything. It gave me this feeling of intimacy with the performance. And that's the thing that I was so struck by, this feeling of, well, here I am sitting in my own comfortable chair at home, and the sharing, the sharing from the performers in this way, as I say, without all the all the stage trappings and looking around and fanning yourself because it's hot, or all that stuff is not there, just the music, pure music, everything else went away. And so I thought, what a beautiful way for the multiplicity of faculty that you attract in the in the festival, you know, to, to share something like this in this sort of intimate personal way. And then for us to be able to get together afterwards and have a chat online. I, I was very um, in love with that. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, I just I remember that I noticed that like when concert is taking place, there are no breaks, the setup of the stage, one person leaves another comes immediately you just sort of like go straight 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 the whole thing was kind of like really an amazing thing and uh, right. and one piece kind of uh, segues into the other piece very smoothly seamlessly which is a nice musical experience really different kind of music they don't have to be separated some people are in their own house some people are on a stage somewhere none of that seems to matter you know it's like wherever we are this is our music and we're, we're playing it it's, it's it's really lovely Interesting. I actually noticed it. I don't know if you remember after the concert, after that Zoom room. You remember what I told you? I don't remember man. what you said. No. No, I said, "Man, you are in shape." <laughs> <laughs> oh, <how nice. laughs> and you told me, "Oh well, you know, I'm actually I could spend time with my piano, you know." And yeah. You know what I noticed personally. If you have one very important concert, sometimes I'm sure you do it too. Like I would just call a couple of friends and say, okay, let's have a little concert beforehand in somebody's house and just run the program prior to the concert. Yeah, you know? it's a good uh, I'm sure you've done it before, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. In this case, I know, okay, I have to play Bach. Okay, so I sit down 
I put a, like a camera. Believe me, when you were recorded, it makes your blood going. So it's just such a wonderful tool recording yourself like video. Of course, we all know that it's useful, but you know, when you actually really do it all the time, it really makes a big change. So now I feel like, okay, if I have a concert, I don't need to really bother anybody. I could just put the camera on myself. And just I think one. that's true. I know I, and during these pandemic times, I think we've all figured out better ways to record ourselves at home because we kind of have to. Then we're better set up to do it. We do it more readily. At least that's been true for me. It's a wonderful tool, the feedback you get from doing this. And I agree with you. The minute the camera rolls, it feels like a like a performance in, the, in a really good way. So, you know, the isolation of this is terrible, but it's also not terrible in a certain way. I mean, I, I don't want this to sound too corny, but, you know, I, as you know, I retired from my my university job this summer having all this time alone doing different projects and recording things in whatever schedule that i want not in a hurry what i found and you'll understand this misha i found that i've sort of fallen in love with music and the piano again not that i ever stopped but i mean again like i was when i was a child it's like it's without everything else without all the other pressures that there used to be it's just this beautiful, sensuous thing that I love. And that's what got me into it as a child. And I'm sh I bet you have the same story to tell. You know, I feel that because life has become, for me, so calm and in a way, isolated. So, you know, we do the make the best of whatever we need to deal with. But as musicians, this is what I always think. And you, I, again, you know that. As musicians, we have access to this other world we can go to, right? Any moment, right? If you and I were in a room, we say, let's play the beginning of the Frank Sonata. We would play two measures and we're in another world. It's like we know how to open up this door and go to this other beautiful place that's bigger than us. And how lucky are we that we know how to do that? Yeah, and also, what's kind of also really interesting that after the concert, when we have this little chat, you know, we, we would yeah. all go to a Zoom room and, and we would talk. I, 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 I personally like little parties. I always like parties. I like yeah, to see really people really around really. me. That's maybe I have like festivals because I really love to see lots of people saying different things. It just feels always good, you know. I'm one of the people who don't like to be alone on the beach, you know. <laughs> I always like lots of people going by, you know, something like that, you know. And after that, you know, like uh, after observing, everybody sits and watches his performances, you know, and we could actually discuss. It's just really kind of almost like surreal atmosphere. I felt like very, even like master classes felt like very intimate, like everybody is like we see his people and everybody's concentrating. The results actually much more impressive. I am actually really noticing now on my students. There is something, uh, you know. Oh there's yeah, there are some great things about online teaching, especially, you know, having people record something, send it to you before the lesson. You get a chance to hear it. They record it calmly. By the time you meet them, you have a different conversation. And I got this feedback from my students too. I used to do like some videos back and forth. They'd send me a video. I'd send them some feedback. They think about it, send me something else. And they said, you know, if you had said those same things to me during a live lesson, it goes by very quickly. And I might not be quite ready to take in what you said. But if we do this at different times, I send you a video, you send me a comment, I have time to process it all and think about it. And I agree with you. I saw some really great results. Some people have been thriving with online teaching. Yeah, and I think for the, for the students, it's just actually such a wonderful thing to record themselves all the time. You know, I remember the funny story, I tell you. I mean, it was not funny at that time. When I was little, my parents got me, I mean, it was in Russia, those days, it was a huge gift. It was a wonderful thing. Not the record player, tape recorder. Yeah. With big tapes, you know, that's sure, like I real to record real. myself. Yeah. And, and I said, at that time, I was not ready. I was not prepared. The piece I played, uh, it was in the beginning of learning it. I played and I go, oh my God, what did you get me? This is such a terrible machine, you know, recording, you know, this is not good, you know. But I recorded it, I analyzed, then I practiced, practiced, practiced. Sound like a week later or something like that. Again, I tried it. Oh my God, this machine is pretty good <laughs> because I, I prepared, you know, <laughs> the same thing here. Of course, technology now in those days, especially in Russia, you know, it's like day and night. And of course, when you have everything available, it's a very simple process. You just press the button and you get recorded. Of course, it's just completely 
completely, totally different thing. And, and students could do it as many times as they want during the day. They could do just on anything. Sure. And the progress is immediately there. Well, oh, because just, they're because they're teaching themselves, like you like right. you did that time. You know, you, your teacher says, "Well, send me a recording of the first movement," and you say, "Okay, I will." But that means you you've recorded it six times before you choose one that you'll actually send to the teacher. And every time you record it, yeah, you're, you're teaching yourself something, yeah, yeah, and, sure. and you're becoming your own teacher. And we always say that that's our goal in life to let people become their own teacher so that they don't need us anymore. So this is a way for that to actually be happening, right? They, they're they doing it anyway. Yeah, in the sense of self-criticism, basically. Right. right? right. That we always try to develop in people. Like, I mean, but, you know, students play, oh, I play great. <laughs> Wait a second, just listen. Did, did, no, but did see, you some, you some little good? voice, some little <laughs> voice inside their mind says, I can do better. I think I, I know I can do better. Let me do it again, because I yeah. know I can do better, right? So then they're already on the path. So yes. uh, it's great, yeah. Well, yes. I even managed to this to this summer meet meet a couple new people that I didn't know, um, which always happens in the in person interharmony. But it can even with a little effort happen online. I was exchanging students with uh, with another piano professor. She was in Taiwan. We got along so wonderfully. We had great, like great conversations as if we'd always known each other. And I thought, well, this feels a little bit like what was always so much fun and the in person thing, sitting at it meal at a big table with people you never met before and sharing your daily life. So, I mean, it has a little bit of that. It, it can't be like that, but I mean, it's a little bit of that feeling. But, you know, it's funny. We did this, you know, this cooking show, you know, with yeah. the class. So I just really didn't want to have some kind of boring, like, you know, studies or from, from one word it's already become so, oh my God, what it is, you know. We wanted to do something exciting and like a real festival with events and stuff like that. And yeah. suddenly we had all these shows and, and it's also a different thing, like interaction. You know that you're speaking to people out of different part of the world, somewhere like in Italy or Germany, and they tell you how to cook or something. It was just such a good event, you know. Also tastes pretty good too. So. <laughs> Well, obviously, especially when you go to Italy, everything is a delight food-wise, my God. Yeah, yeah, sure. So look, Bill, so it, it was, I just feel like we touched on something very important. And actually, I think that we probably should repeat and uh, do this kind of things through the, through the year, you know, because I'm sure many people would love to hear your, whatever you think, whatever your feelings are. I think it's very important. As you said, for musicians, feelings are very important. And when they feel something, maybe they understand. When you just explain to them, like with the black, at the blackboard, you know, they not right. always understand it. But when somebody like you, a performer, who has such a huge experience in teaching, says something, it means something. So I'm so happy that we had this opportunity to, to meet. <laughs> oh, me too, me too. <laughs>